Tab Nation, it's Tom, and today we're going to be talking about face detection using auto hotkeys. I recently did a video doing this in Python, just to kind of show you an example of why I think using it in auto hotkeys might be a little bit simpler, is in auto hotkeys, the code is what we got here, 164 lines of code, where in Python, I think it was like just under 3,000. So a huge difference. The reason really being why is with the face detection in Python, we're using a module, basically a library, where in here we're actually using kind of some of the built-in features that Windows 10 has. I'm not really sure if this works on older versions. Uh, if it does, and you guys have Windows 7 or 8 or whatever, definitely let me know in the comments below just to help other people out. But it does work in Windows 10. I'll at least tell you that. So we're not going to go through a lot of the code here because it's very complex. It's a lot of DLL calls. I've done a video on that explaining that. So if you do want to know a little bit more about what's going on in this actual function, definitely check that video out. <clears throat> um, but we're going to kind of go over the stuff that you're really going to need to change when it comes to the script. So the first thing I got is my hotkey. I'm going to use F1. You don't have to have a hotkey, but I like to be in control of when the program runs. We're going to start out with our path. Now with the path, I've hard-coded this in. If you want to put an input box here instead, that way, you know, if the path's always changing, you're using different folders, you can do that. Definitely put an input box, but I'm just going to hard-code it in. And I got the folder on my desktop using the built-in variable there, A underscore desktop. And it's going to be slash file picks, which is the folder name. And then I'm using a wildcard here, dot JP, JPG. Uh, so looking for those type of pictures. And the wildcard basically just means that I don't care what the name of the file is, as long as the extension matches this, read it. Now obviously you can add more, you can change it, you know, if you're using JPEGs or something or whatever, you can do that. Or I guess that's a JPEG, but you know what I mean. <laughs> the next thing we do is we do need to declare our variable here, pictures with face, as a global the reason we need to declare it as a global is because this is not appearing until inside of the function, but then we need to use it outside of the function. So we need to be able to have that be a global variable. Next, we are going to loop. And this is basically just going to read each file one by one that matches the JPG uh, extension there. And so once again, it's just doing file, it's reading, and it's going to loop through each name in that folder at that location. Once again, if this is going to be changing, you can add another input box where you can say like where you're reading and whatnot. We're then going to jump to our actual function here, which is just face detect, which is right here. And that's under uh, everything here. So basically what's going to happen is once it hits here, it's going to jump down here. It's going to do all this fancy stuff. Which I said, watch the DLL video if you want some more details into what actually is going on here. So it's going to do a bunch of stuff. And it's basically going to find which files have a face in it. And if it does detect a face, store that name of that file so I know which one it is. It's going to jump back up here. It's going to loop again, jump back here. And it's going to keep looping until it runs out of this type of file extension. And it's going to be like, all right, there's no more. We're then going to have a message box pop up. And it's just going to say, has faces, doing a line break. Just kind of put this here to make it look a little better, which you'll see what I mean here in a minute. And there's that global variable, which is going to have all the information stored on which files had faces. Once I push OK on that message box, it's just going to exit the app out. Now, the big thing you might want to change is this code right here. This is really where you're going to do what you want with those pictures. Maybe if you're like a photographer and you're taking both pictures of, you know, people taking portraits, but you're also doing landscape pictures or something, you know, scenery. Maybe you upload all the pictures into one folder. You want to use this and it's going to pull out all those pictures with people in them and move them to another folder. So you could put like a file move here that will loop through each fi file here as it finds it. Or maybe you want to delete all the pictures with people in them. Maybe you're just trying to solely get scenic pictures, but sometimes some people, you know, maybe walk past your camera when you're taking pictures. 
this will sort out all that junk for you. So you can do file, move, file, delete, or have it saved to a text file, whatever. But for the sake of this video, I'm just going to do a message box. It's pretty simple. So let's go ahead. We're going to go ahead and run the face detect script, which I will have in the description below. And if you haven't subscribed yet, definitely do that. I am throwing out two videos every week having to do with automation. Usually not a hockey, but I branch out. So here's the pictures I'm going to be using here. So I got five pictures. And as you see, the first two right here have people in them. So it got a little picture of my daughter, picture of me. And then these three pictures are just some random pictures I've taken over the years that obviously have no faces. You know, we got some Pokemon pictures there. And then we got some jellyfish in here from the Baltimore Aquarium. And I just named them face one, face two. No face one, no face two, no face three. Just so we can display it a little bit better. Obviously, it would be a bunch of string and numbers usually if you're pulling off your camera. So yeah, let's go ahead and press F1. So five pictures, watch how fast it goes. That was like, what, one second? And that was for five pictures. So obviously if you're sorting through like a thousand pictures, yeah, you might take a little bit, you know, really depends. And especially on like the size of the picture and stuff, these ones are cropped pretty small. So it was super fast. And as you see, has faces. There's that little line break that I was talking about with all the minuses just to make it look good. And it got it right. It detected that face1.gpg and face2.gpg had faces in them. And indeed they do. And it obviously did not uh, store the name of these ones because it did not detect a face in there. I'm going to push OK. And that's just going to do that exit app and close. If you don't want it and you want to keep being able to run it over and over again, just uh, get rid of this and put it like a return. Spell correctly. Just put a return in there. It's really what you want to do. Um, I'll actually, for the sake of you all, I'll leave both in there and I'll just comment that out so you can see that the different options are in there. All right. Hopefully you guys find something really cool to do with this. This is a video I would love to hear what you're going to do. If you're a photographer, how would you use this? Uh, or anything else you can think of how you would want to use face detection. I'm very curious on that. Uh, definitely let me know in the comments below if you have any questions on here or get a little bit lost. Maybe I missed something in the video. Definitely let me know also in the comments below. And I will see you all on the next video. Thank you.